Bitcoin's creator, the mysterious Satoshi Nakamoto, solved this problem by inventing something called the blockchain. Think of the blockchain as a giant public ledger that everyone can see but nobody can alter without everyone else agreeing. It's like a spreadsheet that exists on thousands of computers simultaneously, all keeping track of every Bitcoin transaction that has ever occurred. Let's say Alice wants to send one Bitcoin to Bob. When she initiates this transaction, it gets broadcast to the entire Bitcoin network. But before it becomes official, it needs to be verified and added to the blockchain. Bitcoin miners are essentially accountants for the network. They collect recent transactions into groups called blocks and compete to solve complex mathematical puzzles. The first miner to solve the puzzle gets to add their block to the blockchain and receives newly created Bitcoin as a reward. Currently, this reward is 6.25 Bitcoin per block, worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. But what are these puzzles they're solving? They're actually trying to find a special number called a nonce. When combined with the block's transaction data and run through a cryptographic hash function, this nonce must produce a result that starts with a certain number of zeros. It's like trying to find a combination lock that opens only when you get a specific pattern, but you can only guess by trial and error. This process, called proof of work, is intentionally difficult and energy intensive. It's designed this way to make it extremely expensive to attack or manipulate the network. To change a transaction that's already been recorded, an attacker would need to redo all the work for that block and all subsequent blocks while simultaneously outpacing the honest miners. This would require more computing power than the entire rest of the network combined. The genius of this system is that it creates a form of digital scarcity. The genius of this system is that it creates a form of digital scarcity. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin in existence. This limit is built into the code itself. New Bitcoin are created at a predictable rate through mining, and this rate halves every four years in what's called the halving. We started at 50 Bitcoin per block in 2009, dropped to 25 in 2012, 12.5 in 2016, and now we're at 625 as of 2020. But where do Bitcoin actually exist? They don't exist as... Instead, what exists are records of transactions. Your Bitcoin wallet doesn't actually store Bitcoin. It stores your private key. These keys prove your right to spend certain Bitcoin that the blockchain shows were sent. Think of it like this. Imagine the blockchain as a giant public notice board where every your private key is like a special stamp. When you want to spend Bitcoin, you use your private key to create a digital signature that proves anyone can verify your signature is valid. The network maintains consensus through some clever game theory. Miners are incentivized to be honest because they can make more money playing by the rules than trying to cheat. Users are incentivized to use the longest valid blockchain because that's where their Bitcoin have value. And everyone is incentivized to maintain the network's security because that maintains the value of their Bitcoin. But what happens when something goes wrong? What if there's a disagreement about the rules? This is where Bitcoin's decentralized nature becomes crucial. Changes to the Bitcoin protocol can only happen if the majority of the network agrees to them. This has led to some dramatic moments in Bitcoin's history, like the block size wars of 2017, which resulted in the creation. The network's resilience has been tested countless times. It survived market crashes, government crackdowns, competing cryptocurrencies, and despite all this, Bitcoin has never been successfully hacked at the protocol level, and the network has maintained nearly 100% uptime since its launch. This reliability comes at a cost. The Bitcoin network consumes more electricity annually than many. This massive energy consumption is a feature, not a bug. It's what makes Bitcoin secure. However, it's worth noting that an increasing portion of Bitcoin mining uses renewable Bitcoin's design solves several problems that plagued previous attempts at digital currency. It prevents double spending without requiring a central authority. 
It cre and it enables global permissionless transactions without intermediaries. But perhaps most importantly, Bitcoin introduced the world to blockchain technology. This fundamental innovation has inspired thousands of other projects and could potentially revolutionize everything from supply chain management to voting system. Whether Bitcoin itself becomes the future of money remains to be seen. But the technological breakthrough it represents, the ability to create trust without centralized authority, will likely influence human society for decades to come.